In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord. For we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of the resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the liturgy of the word. In the name of the apostles, Peter declares to the crowd that the ministry and the death of Jesus were according to God's plan of salvation. Because Jesus was obedient to the Father, God raised him up and made him the source of our salvation. The first reading. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand to the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, let your face 
John steers confidence in the hearts of sinners. God the Father is ready to forgive us because in the risen Christ, we have a powerful intercessor before God's throne. The second reading. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know Him is to keep His commandments. Those who say, I know Him, but do not keep His commandments are liars and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand to give glory and honor to the Holy Gospel. Lord Jesus, open the scriptures to us. Make our hearts burn while you speak to us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified, and thought they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do your questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I have spoken to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses 
to these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. This is the third Sunday of Easter, and I would really like to invite you when you go home to open your Bible and read the stories of the resurrection. They are really very short. There are about 11 resurrection stories in the Gospel of Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John. And what you will notice, you will notice this first thing, is they did not recognize it. Why is that? Well, something has changed. And the disciples have to get used to this. And that's why in the Gospel of Luke, Jesus stayed around for 40 days. You know, the meaning of 40 is not exactly 40 days. It means a long time. A long time. Because the apostles have to get used to this kind of new presence. And as he said in the Gospel today, he's neither pure spirit nor pure flesh. He cannot be pure spirit because he likes to eat. And it cannot be pure flesh because he goes in and out of the world. He appears and disappears. It's a new kind of presence. Later in Christianity, we will call this new presence the sacramental presence. Second thing that we will notice is he's appearing here, there, and everywhere to so many people. Why? Because he is restoring broken relationships. Jesus' death really testified to what human beings can do. There is treachery, betrayal, violence. And all of us can be victims of that. Or we can cause it. And this creates division in families, in any human relationship. And so the reason Christ appears, and that's why the first message is peace be with you. And then the mission to reconcile and to forgive. Another thing, you know, when you read these stories, you have to ask this very important question. What do these stories mean? What are they trying to convey? Well, first, Jesus is addressing the empty tomb in our hearts. Remember the story of Mary? She thought Jesus was taken by the gardener. And she said, where have you taken him? Tell me, I will take him back. And then Jesus says, Mary. And that's when Mary recognized. There is always emptiness in our hearts and that creates restlessness. And so many times this emptiness in our hearts, we fill it in with all kinds of things and people and interests, worldly things. And yet that emptiness has a shape. Do you know the emptiness in our heart has a shape? It has a God shape. And only God can fill that emptiness. But the reason Christ is also addressing different situations of the human heart. There is the situation of desolation. Remember the story of the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. They were desolate. They felt that they have wasted three years of their lives following this man only to end up dead. They were walking on the way to Emmaus desolate. And Jesus walks with them. Jesus addresses our desolation and our frustration. But Jesus also addresses, as the gospel today, something very important. Our wounded heart. You know, that's the recognition. Jesus has been giving us ways to recognize him. Through his voice, through the breaking of the bread, through the explanation of the scripture, but also through our wounds. Can you imagine 
even the resurrection did not erase the wounds of Jesus look at my hands and my feet it's still there because wounds have very important part to play in our transformation they are in fact the very means of our transformation and lastly death and poverty in the 21st chapter of John Jesus was standing by the shore and he calls his side have you bought anything and he said nothing nothing throw it on the other side and they caught a lot of fish in death and poverty there is abundance and only God can give that abundance and that is another way of recognizing the risen Christ and soon after that story he calls Peter what for to reconcile and to forgive these are the means by which we can recognize the risen Christ but our experiences today do we experience the risen Christ today well let me just give a few examples when we hear on radio or read in the newspaper or watch on TV a taxi driver or a janitor returning a box of money that he needs and returns it and ask why did you return it you need it it's not mine then honesty overcomes greed and corruption or when people in authority are placed in a situation where they can be bribed but again honesty prevails there's the reason Christ when hatred and indifference is overcome by love when violence or revenge is overcome by forgiveness or cruelty by kindness or slavery and addiction by freedom discouragement and frustration by hope all these forms of sin and death when overcome by grace and life what we experience every day is an experience of the resurrection let me then conclude with a beautiful text from the letter of Paul to the Galatians he talks about the fruits of the Spirit and there are manifestations of the risen Christ what are the fruits of the Spirit he says in chapter 5 charity understanding of others kindness and fidelity gentleness and self-control and what is the opposite shamelessness idol worship hatred jealousy and violence anger and ambition division and factions envy drunkenness orgies and the like when we see this in our lives we don't allow the power of the risen Christ to bring life to us but when these are overcome by the fruits of the Spirit then we live by the power of the risen Christ let us all stand I believe in God the Father Almighty creator, creator of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ his only Son our Lord who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified died and was buried he descended into hell on the third day he rose again from the dead he ascended into heaven and he seated at the right hand of the father almighty from there he will come to judge the living and the dead i believe in the holy spirit the holy catholic church the communion of saints the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting amen in the breaking of the bread, Christ Jesus makes himself known to us as our life and resurrection. 
He sends us to be witnesses in His name. Through Him we present our petition to the Father. And from every petition we will say, Lord, protect your people. Lord, protect your people. May our church be a beacon of light, helping people who are in darkness to come to know your Son as the way, the truth, and the life. We pray. Lord, protect your people. May all leaders, by governing with fidelity those entrusted to their care, build nations in peace, brotherhood, and respect for human dignity. We pray. Lord, protect your people. May all consecrated men and women proclaim your resurrection through their lives, their prayer, and their service to others. We pray. Lord, protect your people. Bless our labor that it may sustain our life on earth and enhance our human dignity. Ease our burden, make our faith strong, and inspire us to put our trust in you. We pray. Lord, protect your people. Bless our relatives and friends. Give them constant encouragement and guide them throughout their lives. We pray. Lord, protect your people. Uh, Father Mar wants us to include this special intention for the repose of the soul of Mario Jeremia and Arnold Matas. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Lord, protect your people. And in brief silence, let us now express our personal intentions. God, our Father, you restored us to yourself through the resurrection of Christ, your Son. Hear the prayers of your people and strengthen us in giving witness to our Easter faith. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing while the gifts are presented. that these are offering may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. 
let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the Lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving you thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, 
our bishop and all the ministers of the gospel. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us now pray for the coming of the kingdom as Jesus taught us. us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, and the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And let us offer each other the sign of peace.
This is Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we now who partake at his table. Lord, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those of you who are unable to receive Holy Communion, especially our brothers and sisters who are joining us through this TV Mass, we invite you to pray with us this spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll have the prayer for healing. Father of compassion and mercy, strength of the weak and comfort of the suffering mercifully look upon your people in their frailty and infirmity look upon them with the eyes of your mercy comfort them from the temptation of despair and give them patience under their affliction. In your goodness, O oh Lord, may their sickness turn into health and our sorrow into joy. And granted by the help of your Holy Spirit, the seriousness of their weakness may add strength to their faith. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Come, Lord, live in your people and strengthen them by your grace. Help them to remain close to you in prayer and give them a true love for one another. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of the Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our celebration is ended. Go in the peace of the risen Christ. Thanks be to God.